Hello everybody, Jimmy Smith here from the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for clicking by. This Vinius channel is all things dedicated to the wonderful world of wine, following key text and key syllabus of major wine qualifications. So if you are an avid bookworm studying the world of wine, you will find these videos very useful as you would also if you are an enthusiastic amateur in the world of wine. So we're going to look here at something called the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. So this is looking at the areas of Washington State and Oregon in that northwest of the states. Now, this is following the level three syllabus of the WSET. And this is in a part two parter. This is the theory behind Oregon and Washington State. And part two will be on short written questions. Part two is only available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning platform. And you'll find the information for that over at www.winewithjimmy.com. But part one is nice and free, all about theory. And if you do have a question or a comment, perhaps you have been to these states, you've enjoyed the Willamette Valley of Oregon, perhaps you've been to the Columbia Valley of Washington State, or you live there, you produce wines, or you have a general question about the presentation, please do get in touch. Make sure you click like and you click subscribe. We're going to begin with Oregon, a fantastic state. Um, I love Oregon, uh, have visited uh, multiple times. Wonderful part sitting below Washington State and north of California. And you'll see there on my latitude map, sitting between 42 and 46 degree north, putting it really on par with places like France, Central France, South France, and even going a little bit towards the Spanish border. So that's the similar sort of latitude, but of course, this is very different due to its location and impacts climatically and weather-based in the area. So we, we only really need to know about a couple of parts of Oregon for the WSET Level 3. And the major one is the Willamette Valley that you see just here on your screen. The Willamette Valley AVA, American Viticultural Area, lies to the west of the Cascade Mountains. Now, on my first slide of this presentation, you saw the wonderful dominating topography of the Cascade Mountains, specifically Mount Jefferson. Now, the Cascades form a part of the big Pacific Ring, and you can follow these mountains all the way down to Central America through South America as well, where they're the Andes, and it's a big, big dominating mountain range. Now, the Willamette Valley sits on the west side, so therefore on the Pacific side of the Cascade Mountains, and it stretches south from the city of Portland. That's what you'll see on your map just to the right hand side there. It has the largest concentration of wineries and vineyards in the whole state of Oregon. It's a moderate climate and experiences cooling breezes from the Pacific, which come through gaps in the coast range. Now the Pacific has some lovely cold air, which is the Alaskan current, and that's what brings these cooling effects to this location. But it is quite wet annually, about a thousand millimeters of rain, but most of it is winter rain. So this actually has a fairly dry growing season with long sunny days and cold nights due to its latitude. Pinot Noir is the most importantly planted grape variety, producing red wines with red fruit characters, which are quite ripe, a hint of cinnamon spice and lovely acidities. Um, they can be found in a lot of the sub-nestled AVAs, but you are just required to know about the overarching Willamette Valley. You'll see Adelsheim Pinot Noir on the left-hand side. The Adelsheim Winery crafts wonderful wines, both Chardonnay 
and Pinot Noir are delicious from this winery. Pinot Gris is also widely grown. It's the most important white grape and tends to be made in kind of a, a, a bridging ground behind, between sort of a Pinot Grigio from Veneto and a Pinot Gris from Alsace. Then there is the Southern Oregon AVA. This lies directly to the south of the Willamette Valley and it has AVAs within it, such as Rogue Valley AVA to the southern section, the Umpka Valley, which you see towards the more northern area, and other AVAs. This region is the warmest growing conditions in Oregon, but there are cooler sites on hillsides here too, and valleys. So you have cool and warm climate varieties. So Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon for the warmer ones, and Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris for the cooler sites. There's some real fun uh, international, uh, sorry, Mediterranean varieties down here as well. San Giovese, Montepulciano, Nebbiolo. Next is the state that lies to the north. This is Washington State. And the majority of vineyards are planted in the extensive Columbia Valley AVA, which is highlighted on your map there in kind of the extensive light orangey yellow color. This lies to the east of the Cascade Mountains, so this is really the reverse of the Oregon state with the Willamette lying on the west. Uh, it lies on the Columbia River, one of the largest river uh, thoroughways in the whole of uh, America, or certainly, sorry, the USA. And most are labelled as Columbia Valley, but there are some smaller AVAs such as Yakima AVA and Walla Walla as well, which can produce some very interesting wines. Now, Columbia Valley AVA and Yakima, the Columbia Valley AVA lies in that rain shadow of the Cascade Mountains. So it's very dry, it makes irrigation and river water a necessity. One, winemakers here will take really great opportunity of the long daylight hours and consistent summer temperatures. The fruit gets optimum ripeness typically here and then gets good acidities due to the cold nights. The problem though is that this can be very continental and you get very, very winter conditions, very bitterly cold, which may sometimes in some years reduce crops dramatically. The green area on the map, by the way, is the whole of the Yakima Valley AVA. Key styles found across Washington state. So plummy, full-bodied Merlot, elegant age-worthy Cabernet Sauvignon probably are the most two important black varieties, but most increasingly and possibly most importantly today, Syrah is being produced in places like Yakima and Walla Walla, making them quite concentrated, but often with great aromatic floral and pepper notes. Chardonnay is the most widely planted white grape variety, making fruity and sometimes toasty oak expressions. And Riesling is also popular, typically made in a dry style with ripe fruit, like stone fruit. The one on the far right hand side is Chateau Saint Michel, which is in fact the single largest producer of Riesling in the world. Do look out for Gramercy sellers in the middle as well, who are making cracking wines from Walla Walla, specifically from Syrah. Okay, okay, let's take a look at this Google Earth video. First of all, let's take a look at Oregon State and we'll give you the latitudes that puts it in the sort of early to mid 40s, similar to, of course, France, giving it wonderfully sunny days during summer and cold nights. There's the dramatic Cascade Mountains, which are a big feature to central West Oregon. And lying on the Pacific side, so to the west, is the key AVA of the Willamette Valley with the most concentration of vineyards and wineries. So this is fairly wet, but most of it is winter rainfall, so it stays dry in summer. We then come down to Southern Oregon AVA, where we find the Umpqua Valley, and then also Rogue Valley. 
This is in fact the warmest area of uh, the whole of Oregon State, but due to all of the different sort of valleys and altitudes here, all the areas down here will make a mixture of warm climate and cool climate production grapes, Cabernet Syrah and things like Pinot Chardonnay, Pinot Gris. Washington State is next to the north, bordering Canada to the north and bordering Oregon. We have the Cascade Mountain Range again and the Columbia River, uh, the United States' fourth largest river network. Along that river network, because it's the life force of the area, is the Columbia Valley AVA, where most wine is produced, easily sort of 98, 99%. So this is very dry, uh, very warm because of the Cascade rain shadow effect. And we have a, an AVA here called the Yakima Valley AVA, nestled within Columbia Valley, making very similar styles to most of the Columbia Valley AVA. Well, thank you for following me on this journey of theory. Please do join me for part two, where I will test your knowledge. I will lead you through short written answer questions referring to the theory from part one. You will only be able to access video if you subscribe to my e-learning platform. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Once again, any comments or questions, please do get in touch. But until next time, see you again soon. Ciao for now.